Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today, we are going to be reading another set of cards from Eclipse Comics and we're going to be reading some of the cards from Coup d'etat, the assassination of John F. Kennedy trading cards. And this was put out, well, there's a little description in here. We'll read that during the reading. But give you a little intro here. Okay. These were put out in 1990, I believe. I don't know if this is going to focus. It's very glary. But we'll try it. Especially since this is... Maybe we have to do this. There we go. The writer for these cars is Paul Brancato. Okay. And Paul Brancato did the writing for uh, drug war trading cars as well as the Iran Contra scandal, I believe. The artist for this is Bill... Sin quasi sin quasi. I I have no idea how to pronounce that, but Bill is one of the considered to be one of the greatest comic book artists artists in history. He really made his uh, mark in the 1980s. He did a lot of work for Eclipse Comics, independent comics. He did a lot of work for Marvel. He did the Dune miniseries. His art style is absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, and you're gonna see some of it in these cards well you're going to see all of it in these cards right the editor for this was Catherine Yoron Wood uh, and I believe she was the editor for all of these trading cards and these were put out by Eclipse Enterprises Eclipse Comics PO Box 1099 Forestville California 95436 and this was selling for nine dollars eight ninety five US at the time and 1095 Canadian at the time and just a little bit of history regarding Eclipse Comics Todd McFarland ended up buying Eclipse Comics their catalog and whatever they had left in their inventory in 1995 I believe for 50 grand or 25,000 I think it was $25,000 which would have been one of the deals of the century right like what what a buy yeah and this was put out in 1990 check this out text copyright 1990 Paul Brancato and Paul Brancato was a violinist in the Vancouver in the San Francisco uh, Symphony I believe and he basically funded these cars I know he funded the drug war trading cars himself uh, because he wanted the information out there so huge respect to this person one day I'm gonna look this guy up and see if he's still alive I think he passed away but uh, what a legacy to leave behind what a legacy to leave behind okay and we've done the reading for the drug war trading cards we did uh, two live streams the first one we read card number 1 to 18 the second one we read number card card number 19 to 36 and I uploaded each individual card as a separate video on all our four of our video sharing platforms uh, on on sensor to bit shoot rumble and odyssey so all those all those readings for the drug war trading card should be up there and most likely we're going to do the same for the coup d'etat as well upload each individual reading uh, it takes a little bit of time to break them all down but uh, I will in the next two weeks uh, take care of that okay and uh, aside from that at some point we're going to read Iran Contra scandal okay the cars for the Iran Contra scandal extremely important event in history extremely important event in history okay really ties into many other things that are taking place and have taken place for the last 40 years okay and this is regarding uh, uh, Iran hostage crisis and um, Latin America South America arms dealing laundering money Wall Street CIA black ops and all that jazz and at some point we'll definitely be reading rotten to the core trading cars the best and worst of New York City's politics and this has uh, Donald Trump's rookie card in there I believe I believe this is a rookie card basically there's a card in here that is Donald Trump and this one is uh, on the very much collectible uh, everybody's collectible radar or many people's collectible radar that know about this card okay and uh, I would I would say this and this I'm glad to have all these in my collection and there's two more there's actually four more sets 
of trading cards that Eclipse Comics put out. One of them was comic book creators, which I will try to get my hands on. One of them was a baseball trading card set, which I will try to get my hands on. One of them is, fr another one was Friendly Dictators, which I definitely will be getting my hands on at some point. And I believe there was another one in all of these as well. But for now, gang, let's go into that intro aside. Okay, done. Let's have a read through coup d'etat the assassination of jfk trading cards and just one more note gang for the drug war trading cards in our yearly uh, twitch points giveaway auction we gave away a bunch of these card sets right i bought a uh, a few of these as many as i could get my hands on that i could afford to buy in uh, in bulk and we auction them off so at the end of the year we'll probably auction off more of these guys as well okay and gang everybody welcome to our live stream okay now let's have a look at this thing we already took a look at the box okay let's take a look at it a little bit closer there's oswald the patsy Right, Kennedy. Uh, what's this guy's name that took over as president? I'm bad with the names. There's Jackie. There's uh, oh man, one of the most horrendous people ever. Presidential motorcade roots. Yep, Hoover. Hoover. I believe that's supposed to be Hoover right Lyndon B Johnson that's right LBJ thank you very much Figgy okay. let's bring these out let's close the sky we're gonna read this thing because it's got the sort of the intro on it and we flipped these yesterday we did a live stream on conspiracies and we ended up looking at the artwork on all of these cards we're just going to work our way through it one by one okay and as we get started on this remember remember that we have to work towards freeing Assange, Julian Assange, because he's a publisher, a journalist, someone who's being crucified, tortured for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. Very much related to what's going on in this part of history. Okay. And if you want further information, please see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Censor 2. Let's have a read through this, the insert of this thing. Other current events items from Eclipse Books, P.O. Box 1099 Forestville, California 95436. The Iran Contra scandal trading cards. Brancato, Brancato Yakwap. And Yakwap did the artwork for the drug war trading cards as well. Rotten to the core. The New York City New, New York City political scandal trading card. Gold, Gordon Murray Bryant Kosher. Man, if you could get your hands on a set of these for $8.95 in mint condition. Wow, wow, wow the they are fetching we were able to get ours for around 150 us okay it's usually fetching a higher price than that and if you have the donald trump card from the rotten to the core in mint condition it's probably fetching well over a thousand dollars and into a few thousand dollars great investment if you could got your hands on those friendly dictators trading cards bernstein sindel Oh, uh, Samowski did the uh, friendly dictators as well. Oh, nice, nice. 
got to get ourselves that one as well and we will and we will okay bush league trading cards that's baseball and i don't have that one either and we will definitely get it uh da -da 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 -da. what's this one brought to light more shinsuke oh man sends kowalski robber yates and uh mavrides i don't know what brought to light is i gotta look up that one as well and 80 page full color graphic documentary that reveals oh okay okay it's a documentary reveals 30 years of covert action drug running and arms deals that rob america and betrayed the constitution based on the uh Christ christic institutes christic institutes explosive investigation wow i don't know brought to light if anybody finds this documentary brought to light link it uh on our discord page for now but that might be going under censorship too we'll see we'll see okay el salvador a house divided top 250 uh, a 40 page factual book black and white comic book wow nice 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 real war stories edition by braber two dollars a 48 page uh, color comic book produced for the central committee for constitute uh, conscious objectors objectors right and we read war stories number one uh i have both of these comics there's war stories number one and war stories number two and i think there was only two of them and one of them we read we read number two i believe and it contained uh, uh smedley butler's wars a racketing graphic um in comic book format right not the whole story just parts of it excerpts of it additional sets of coup d'etat trading cards 8.95 please add one dollar postage and handling per item total enclosed and you got your address and stuff on there right. let's read the description for these cards coup d'etat the assassination of john f kennedy trading cards is meant to serve as an introduction to this most complicated subject in in preparation in preparing this material the author consulted the following books mafia kingfish by john davis conspiracy by anthony summers crossfire by jim mars best evidence by david lifton reasonable doubt by henry hurt whitewash series by the dean of assassination researchers wow uh harold weinsberg Harold Weinsberg, Dean of Assassination Researchers. Wow. Coincidence and Conspiracy by Bud Fensterwald. And they, they've, they've Killed the President by Robert Sant Anson. The author would also like to thank veteran researcher Paul Hodge and Robert Ranfdell and Peter Dale Scott whose unpublished work the dallas conspiracy was most illuminating really i wonder if uh, the dallas conspiracy has been published now at the time it wasn't paul brancato is a violinist with the san francisco symphony and the author of two previous trading car sets the iran contra scandal and bush league and he did the drug war trading cards. so drug war trading cards probably came after this he is currently working on two additional sets of trading cards one of which from dallas to watergate oh my god continues themes introduced in coup d'etat and i don't think they were ever able to produce dallas to watergate i don't think those uh, those trading cards saw the light of day too bad too bad independent publishers is where is that gang bill and by the way uh elder god posted something about uh on the live chat so i'm going to read a little bit more about this because this is the history of uh, brancato brancato i'm just going to read this brancato 73 is a new york city native and co uh, college dropout who took violent lessons as a kid and started hawking his wares as a as a berkeley street musician in the late 1960s after after stints with the oakland symphony and, Lo, and los angeles chamber orchestra he was hired by, by the san francisco orchestra in the 1980s a childhood love of baseball cars was renewed 
it led him to think about creating a new genre he contacted the Christ Christic Institute in an interfaith group uh, Christ Institute, an interfaith group involved with law and public policy which suggested Eclipse books an underground comic book publisher 60 miles north of San Francisco it liked his uh, first idea about cards on the Iran Contra scandal which would be these guys here let's check it out as we do as we read this uh, so Eclipse liked his uh, first idea about cars on the Iran Contra scandal but said he had to take the financial risk they distribute them nice he got artist Sa Salim Yakub Yakub to help and did the research himself producing 60 36 cars with 270 words of information on the back of each it's a nifty who's who on the scandal ranging from an overview of the congressional hearings to pro to profiles of figures big and small including North Reed Rhett Major General uh, John Singlob Elliot Abrams Eugene Hasselhoff Hasselfoss Fawn Hall Felix Rodriguez and of course Ronald Reagan very cool very cool and he took the financial risk of this as well drug war trading cards and I'm assuming he might have done it with this as well coup d'etat right uh, but either way kudos to Eclipse Comics for picking this up and this is what and these are the same same artists as the drug war trading cards right very much in the same here I'll show you this as well here's the drug war trading cards right same style so this is drug war trading cards Iran Contra and there are characters from both that overlap in this okay that overlap in this thing so super cool beautiful artwork and looking forward to reading these as well but for now we're gonna head up a little tangent there gang but I think a tangent is worth it for us to put this into context of what's going on here okay. and let's read Bill and the artist for this set is absolutely phenomenal Bill sequence Bill you guys can pronounce the name sign Q is Sanquiz Bill Bill is noted painter cartoonist and graphic novelist whose illustrator illustrations have appeared in friendly dictators trading cards and brought to light his most recent graphic work can be seen in big numbers and the forthcoming current event events comic books real war stories number two and sound bites and we've read parts of real war stories number two right and bill uh became a legend sort of uh put his mark in comic books in the 1980s with what he was doing okay. let's put this here so we know what we're reading sin k vich bill sinkevich Sinka is that how you pronounce it Felaris? someone posted that in our chat Sinkovich Bill Sinkovich Bill Sinkovich thank you Bill Sinkovich so the writing for this is done by Paul Brancato and the art is Bill Sinkovich Bill Sinkovich nice in 1990 good data trading cards tax copyright 1990 Paul Brancato art copyright 1990 bill sinkovich eclipse enterprises p.o box 1099 forestville california 95436 card number one the assassination let's look at the artwork first beautiful paint wow 
wanted for treason. Many people consider the assassination of JFK to be the moment that a coup d'etat was conducted in the United States of America. And those that assassinated JFK are still in power in the United States of America. They have never been brought to justice. Right. Let's have a read through this. Let's get a little history on the way. Card number one, the assassination. Politics brought John Kennedy to Texas in 1963. The 35th president won the Congress, a uh, conservative state in the 1960 election, largely for his tough stand on Cuba. He, his promised defense buildup and his Texan running mate. But Kennedy's uh, 1,000 and 26 days in office were characterized by increasingly liberal policies the failed 1961 cuban bay of pigs invasion the 1962 cuban missile crisis the 1963 test ban treaty with the soviets and then and the administration's support of martin luther king and the civil rights movement added to kennedy's growing unpopularity in right-wing circles in the nine months before the president's visit to Dallas, the Secret Service had uh, received more than 400 threats on his life. On November 18, one of, his, one of these caused the cancellation of a planned motorcade through Miami. In Texas, a state dependent on the oil and defense industries, Recent moves to repeal the sacrosanct, 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 27.5% oil depletion allowance and plans to begin withdrawal of U.S. military advisors from Vietnam were viewed with particular alarm. Nowhere, nowhere more visibly than in Dallas, a hotbed of right-wing fringe activity. In October 1963, UN Ambassador Adlai Stevenson had been had been shoved, spat on, and hit with picket sign picket sign there. When Kennedy read the Dallas Morning News on Friday morning, November 2nd, 22nd, he was greeted by a full page ad in bold, black type suggesting that he was a communist and a traitor. A few hours later, as he rode through downtown Dallas, accompanied by Dallas Governor John Con Conley and Vice President, President Lyndon Johnson, the motorcade route was lined with protesters picturing Kennedy with the words, wanted for treason. The stage was set for assassination. Card number two, the Secret Service. Jackie Onassis, what's this here? Oh, wow, that's the, them in the car. That's beautiful. What a beautiful painting look at that ambushed wow 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 one of the most uh, important moments of uh, uh, of what took place was when Jackie Onassis embraced Kennedy, right? Tried to protect him. Palm 
haunting image. Card number two, the Secret Service. Dallas Police and Secret Service agents Winston Lawson and Forrest Sorrells, who planned and were in charge of the motorcade, let Kennedy ride through Dallas in an open limousine, making no attempt to secure buildings or rooftops along the route. Although Secret Service rules prohibited turns of more than 90 degrees, the motorcade made a plan but unnecessary 128 degree turn in front of the Dallas School Book Depository in Dealey Plaza, causing the car to slow down. Seconds later, shots rang out, hitting the president and Governor uh, Conley. Films taken at the time, 12.30 p.m., show that after the shooting began, the brake lights on the president's car, car driven by Secret Service agent William Greer, came on, again slow, slowing the car before the fatal shot was fired six to eight seconds later. The morally wo mortally wounded president was rushed to Parkland Hospital where, after a, a tri triotomy and other life-saving measures were performed, he was pronounced dead at 1 p.m. In contravention of Dallas law and over the objections of the Dallas County Medical Examiner, Kennedy's body was removed at gunpoint by Secret Service agents, taken to Air Force One and flown to Bathista Naval Hospital in Maryland. Several, several people observed a bullet hole in the windshield of the president's limousine while it was outside Parkland Hospital. The Secret Service immediately flew the vehicle to Washington, D.C., allowed the FBI to inspect it, and scrubbed it clean. The windshield turned in as evidence several months later was slightly damaged on the inside as, it, as if from a bullet fragment, but had no hole through it. Thus, evidence of a possible additional shot or frontal attack was suppressed. Card number three, the autopsy. This is like a, the best evidence. It's like a storyboard, right? Little mini page comic book. So let's take a look at this. Very small, hopefully we get to see it well. There we go. Presential motorcade rolls on towards Dealey Plaza. Kennedy waves crowds. Lee Har Harvey Oswald takes his lunch breakfast while ignoring President President persistent thought of bad vibes. He's eating food numb. A shot rings out from the overpass, sort of, and hits school book depository where Oh the dog got hit. Cool. It ricochets, and again, uh, and again, caroms off, caroms off, collar of dog standing on grassy knoll. <laughs> Ricochet again, hits uh, depository, knocks over Oswald's co cola. Angry, he he bats bullet out. window with his curtain rods bullet falls into midst of the motorcade motorcade 
Bullet strikes Kennedy's neck, exits via his throat. Bullet continues on. Bullet tears through car seat and enters John Conley's back angrily. Bullet exits Connery and in pro process does triple <laughs> somersault with a twist. Feeling intense separation anxiety, Bullet re-enters Conley, geez. Passing through Conley's wrist, Bullet settles into his thigh. Anxiety and fidgety, Bullet jumps up and strikes Kennedy in the head. Bullet pushes Kennedy's brains into Jackie's hands and then disappears. Kennedy is rushed to hospital in critical condition. No bullet. Relax, I'm free, the bullet says. Bullet, bullet Mac Macaulay appears on stretcher with Kennedy. Bullet is unscathed. Kennedy dies. Magic bullet makes talk show circuit. And just a backup story regarding this. This bullet story, believe it or not, is the official story. And I happen to have a phenomenal history teacher in high school. Okay, for one year I had this teacher, and he ended up being the vice president of school um, I was in later on after I had left years later. But when he was teaching us about the assassination of JFK, okay he was in front of the class and he explained what the official story was regarding jfk's assassination and really did a number with this bullet he was very animated in front of class saying that the bullet went this way and then went this way went through the wrist it got into the thigh and did all this and blah 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 and he did it in a way which was mocking the original the story even though he had to cover it right years later on our 25th reunion for graduation okay i went up to him and i mentioned to him and this was a few years ago i mentioned to him that this story where he explained how the bullet was ricocheting everywhere and this one bullet was you know making multiple injuries and killing people right as it, as it made its way through two people right uh, I mentioned to him it was because of that story that I really went wait a second that can't happen and I realized that the assassination of John FK it was one of the I guess what do you call the red pill moments in my time uh, where I realized that there's more to it than the official story and of course there's more to all the stories than the official stories that the government's centralized power releases Card number four, Crossfire. Oh, wait a second, the autopsy. We read the front, we didn't read the back. What am I doing? We almost, almost forgot to read the back with Chicho going on a rant. Or story time. Card number three, the autopsy. At Beth Bethista Naval Hospital, the autopsy was performed by Commander James Humes and two other naval doctors, none of them forensic pathologists. Their findings were in incompatible with the observation of the Parkland Hospital doctors. Parkland observed a three-inch hole in the back of the head, indicating the large exit hole of a frontal shot whereas Humes, whose first observation, according to FBI agents at the scene, was that there had been a surgery of the head area, described the head wound as a gaping hole towards the right front, as from a rear shot. Parkland saw a black wound below the right shoulder, back wound below the right shoulder, 
which Hume is located in the neck. More incredibly, Parkland observed an entrance wound in the throat where Hume saw only a, a trichotomy. After being informed of this mistake, the next day and without having followed the path of the bullet through the neck, on orders from an unnamed general, Humes concluded that bullet had exited from the throat. He then burned his preliminary autopsy notes. Humes' findings, coupled with a bullet found on a stretcher at Parkland, set the scene for what was later known as the magic bullet theory. Had the body been altered en route? The ornate presidential uh, casket was left unguarded on Air Force One, delayed before takeoff from Dallas, while Lyndon Johnson, on his own orders, was sworn in as president. And naval officers later said that Kennedy's body was brought to Bethesda in a body bag inside a cheap tin casket prior to arrival of the official on entourage why wasn't the autopsy performed in dallas lyndon johnson refused to leave without the president's widow who likewise refused to depart without her husband's body wow card number Four crossfire. The sniper's nest. Oswald, right? Oswald was not here. Oswald was not here. Bill Hicks has an amazing little sketch he does regarding Oswald and the assassination of John F. K. It's phenomenal. I highly recommend. If you haven't seen Bill Hicks's segment on JFK assassination of JFK, I highly recommend looking it up. And he has a little bit regarding this scene right here. Oswald was not here. Here's a little bit. I'll give you the punchline. He says, oh, there's a museum where you can actually go there and see where the shots were taken. And it's very accurate to actually what happened because Oswald was not there. Crossfire. Part number four. 30 minutes after the assassination, Dallas police found what they assumed to be a sniper's nest. Boxes piled high around a sixth floor window in the easternmo easternmost corner of the Texas School Book Depository, TSBD. Three spent shells lay near neatly on the floor in front of the window. 20 minutes later, a rifle identified in a sworn affidavit by Dallas, Dallas police as a 7.65 millimeter German Mauser was found under a pile of books in another corner of the sixth floor. The next day, the rifle was re-identified as a 6.5 millimeter Italian Manlesher Car Carcana Carcano that basically matched the three shells. On the 138 of the 138 witnesses to the assassination later asked to testify as to where the shots came from, 32 said they came from the uh, Texas School Book Depository to the right rear of the president, while 58 named the grassy knoll above and to the right front of the limousine as a source of the shot. Most of the other 48 witnesses heard shots from both directions. 
In addition, many smelled gunpowder near the picket fence on the grassy knoll. Police and bystanders rushed up the embankment towards the knoll. Fresh footprints uh, were seen behind the picket fence. The first Dallas policeman to reach the parking lot above the knoll encountered a sloppy, uh, sloppily dressed man standing by a car who produced Secret Service credentials. The Secret Service later def denied any knowledge of this agent. At 2.30 p.m., a man was brought into police headquarters under suspicion of killing a police officer. His name was Lee Harvey Oswald, an employee of the Texas, Texas, Texas School Book Depository, Texas School Book Depository, whose manager, Roy Truly, had last seen him two minutes after the assassination, drinking a Coke outside the second floor lunchroom. wow 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 like right now you could you should right now uh ditch all the history books that they have in canadian because they teach this in canada as well as you're used to canadian high schools and american high schools because they're full of bs and just give everybody in class one deck of cards of what took place the coup d'etat in the united states and one semester should be spent reading these right card number five card number five patrolman murdered jd tippet jd tippet Troll man murdered. Let's check this out. What does that say? Oswald stops at roaming house. Oswald kills Officer Tippett. Oswald sheds jacket. Oh, and that's a map of Texas our uh, Dallas behind it eh? that's where it was probably killed the star beautiful artwork by the way amazing look at that was he shot in the eye Lee Harvey Oswald claimed he was eating lunch at the Texas School Book Depository when the shooting occurred and that he left shortly thereafter, believing there would be no more work that day. According to his landlady, he arrived at his Dallas rooming house at 1 p.m., changed his shirt, and departed at 103. She also testified that while he was there a police car had pulled up to the house and honked between 106 and 115 a mile away dallas patrolman j d tippett was shot dead next to his car at 145 receiving a report that a suspicious man had just sneaked into a movie theater a half a mile from the tippett slaying police converged on the scene someone fingered oswald and after a short scuffle, he was arrested, gun in hand. The theater uh, concessionaire later said Oswald had entered legally. Meanwhile, police also searched for a 1957 Chevy seen near the murder. The only witness to the murder of Tippett who identified Oswald in the police lineup was uh, Miss mrs helen markham How, however she failed to recognize him eight times 
until she was asked was there a number two man in there to which she responded cynically number two is the one i picked when i saw this man i wasn't so sure but i had cold chills four bullets were recovered from tippet's body three copper coated western and one lead remington none traceable to oswald's gun four shells which did match his gun were sent to the fbi a week later two westerners and two remingtons but they they no longer bore the initials of the policeman who had received them as evidence did someone plant these unmarked shells to further incriminate oswald Card number six, alias Alec Hindle. Alias Alec Hindle. And what is card number six? The mail order rifle. Mail order rifle. This is Oswald. Let's check it out. The glare. Let's see. Oh, it just doesn't want to focus. There we go. That's as good as we can get it. Oh, we lost it again. There we go. Interesting. That's like a picture and then tape holding the picture up in front of concealing someone's head. Cool pick. Very cool. Very cool. Mail order rifle. Oswald was charged with the murder of of the president at 1 30 a.m. November 23rd the key to proving his guilt lay in linking him to the alleged murder weapon the man lesher Carcano rifle in the FBI's possession might not have been the rifle found near the sniper's nest that gun had been identified as a Mauser but it most certainly belonged to Oswald However, despite an adjustment of the rifle's badly misaligned telescope sight, no marksman has ever duplicated the speed and accuracy attributed to Oswald and his notoriously unreliable man, man lesher Cardan Carcano. The FBI discovered that one A. Hindle, using Oswald's Dallas book, Dallas Post office box had mail order such a rifle eight months earlier when two two forged military ids in the name of uh, alec j hendel were found in oswald's wallet upon his arrest dallas police asked military intelligence to check their files on hendel which they found cross-reference to oswald that the military had files on Oswald's rarely used alias, Hindle suggests they were aware of his gun purchase. Unfortunately, these Oswald Hindle files were later, quote, routinely, end quote, destroyed before being examined by official investigators. When Oswald was shown a photo of himself holding a rifle in one of his in one hand and a communist newspaper in the other he claimed a picture found
found among his possessions was a fake and that later he would show how it was done. In 1975, three versions of this photo had surfaced, each different than the other, but all of all with the identical head and all with mismatched shadows. Some researchers think Oswald created these photo uh, montages for a still given purpose. Wow. Check it out. So what he's holding is a communist manifesto, I guess. Huh. Card number seven. Ruby kills Oswald. So many assassinations in the 1960s. Eh? Ruby kills Oswald. And this is Ruby Oswald. This is a famous video. The other assassination, right? One of the other assassinations. And this is, uh, check this out. This picture right here is when they were bringing out uh, Oswald and the hand here is Jack Ruby coming up and shooting Oswald in the stomach, right? And the police officers that were holding Oswald, they basically let it happen, right? They offered Oswald as a sacrificial lamb. And there's a lot of shenanigans with this as well. Beautiful picture, beautiful picture, beautiful painting, right? Let's see if we can get a good focus on this. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I think he fired twice. Ruby kills Oswald. On Sunday morning, November 24th, millions of television viewers watched in shock as Lee, o Lee Oswald was shot dead in the basement of the Dallas police headquarters. With Oswald gone, the evidence against them escalated. On the 25th, Dallas police revealed they had found Oswald's palm print on his rifle. The funeral director later said police officers had spent hours with Oswald's corpse, leaving ink all over his hand. Oswald's killer was Jacob Leon Rubenstein, aka, uh, AKA Jack Ruby owner of a local strip joint called the carousel ruby's perfectly timed unseen access to the basement suggests the complicity complicity of one or more dallas policemen many of whom frequented the carousel where they received free drinks and occasional favors from ruby's girls dallas police chief jesse curry chose the basement route for Oswald's transfer to Dallas County Jail despite early morning morning phone calls warning of a plot to kill Oswald. Quote, right there in the basement, end quote. To kill Oswald right there in the basement. The officer in charge of basement security was Lieutenant George Butler, whom Ruby had known since 1947. Like many Dallas police, Butler was a KKK man, and he, he moonlit, moonlit it as a personal security guard for oil billionaire H.L. Hunt. Moments before the shooting, Ruby concealed himself behind his friend of 11 years, Detective William Blackie Johnson. In 1963, Ruby's failing nightclub was for sale, and he owed $40,000 in back taxes. Three hours after Kennedy's assassination, he went to his bank with $7,000 in large bills. He then closed his club, and for two days he stalked Oswald, 
visiting the police station several times before finally silencing him. He had had someone made Ruby an offer he couldn't refuse. It's crazy too. Jack Ruby. Oop. Where is it? So Rubenstein, Jacob Leon Rubenstein, that's a Jewish name. So Jack Ruby was Jewish and he was friends with the cop that basically let him in and the cop was KKK like wow what is going on here what is going on card number eight card number eight the Warren Commission the Warren Commission whitewash whitewash let's see if we can pick out the names here senator john sherman cooper representative of kentucky john j mcloy alan polis oh my god J. Lee Rankin, Chief Counsel, Chairman Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the United States, Senator Richard Russell, Dem of Georgia, Representative Hale Boggs, Dem of Louisiana. Democrat of Louisiana, Representative Gerald Ford, oh my God, uh, Representative of Michigan. All right. Eight people. Let's look at their faces. number eight the Warren Commission on November 29 1963 Chief Justice Earl Warren uh, tearfully accepted chairmanship of the President's Commission on the assassination of President Kennedy at the Commission's first meeting ex CIA director Alan Dulles set the tone for their investigation by handing out copies of a book claiming presidential assassins are always loners having no investigatory staff of its own and forced to follow the fbi's lead the commission took uh, depositions from 552 witnesses consistently highlighting testimony that supported the lone assassin theory while important evidence such as Kennedy's autopsy x-rays were not included in the report dental x-rays of Jack Ruby's mother's teeth were in September 1964 the Commission concluded that both Oswald and Ruby were lone assassins this fixation with uh, squelching rumors of conspiracy resulted in the Commission's in during magic bullet theory knowing that oswald could not have fired four times in the allotted time span and having to account for kennedy's head wound as well as a bystander's injuries the commission contradicted its own ballistic experts by concluding that exhibit 399 a bullet found on a stretcher at parkland hospital in near pristine condition had entered Kennedy's upper back, exited his neck, and gone on to break 
Dallas uh, to break Texas Governor John uh, Conley's rib, shattered his wrist bone, and lodged in his thigh. Ironically, the Warren Commission's insistence on the lone assassin led to the periodic re-examination of evidence withheld from and suppressed by the Commission and gave rise to a legion of conspiracy theories, quote, involved uh, involving various shadowy figures presumed to have masterminded Kennedy's murder. And this right here, this right here, is the reason why we should never ever allow centralized censorship to control our societies. Because what they do is they suppress the truth, suppress information, discourse, and they push a narrative that is in the interest of those who are committing crimes against humanity and assassinating presidents possibly so aside from bureaucracy being the enemy of humanity so is censorship card number nine Card number nine, suppressed evidence. Number nine, the Zapruder film. The Zapruder film. Let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can see details. And that's the motorcade. There's Jackie holding Kennedy, blood splattered all over the, look at that. Suppressed evidence. I wonder where the original pieces here are, my God. The Zapruder film. One of the Warren Commission's proof of a re, re, war, reward, re, rear ward attack was a film of the assassination taken by amateur photographer Abraham Zapruder and immediately brought by, bought by Life magazine publisher C.D. Jackson. The film was suppressed but select, selected frames were given to the Warren Commission and printed in life in 1964. In March 1975, when the Zapruder film was first shown on national television, it became clear that the previously printed frames had been flip-flopped and in actuality, in actuality, Kennedy was thrown violently backwards, his head exploding in a re rearward spray of brain matter. This visible evidence of a frontal attack undid the work of the Warren Commission. In 1975 to 76, several witnesses testifying to the Senate Intelligence Committee about the Kennedy murder died. Let's read that again. In 1975 to 76, several witnesses testifying to the Senate Intelligence Committee about the Kennedy murder died, prompting the 1976 creation of the House Secret Committee on Assassinations, HSCA. In a caustical study, a, a, in a caustical study of a police radio recording of the president's assassination led to the HSCA to conclude in 1979 then there had been at least four shots and that a second gunman had fired from the grassy knoll. The Select Committee on Assassination, HC, HSCA Chief Counsel G. Robert Blakey postulated the mafia was behind the conspiracy 
and develop circumstance, circumstantial evidence that elements of organized crime played a role, concentrating on Jack Ruby's ties to gangsters. He underplayed Oswald's link to the U.S. intelligence agencies, never examined Oswald's volumi, vol voluminous CIA 201 file, demanded that uh, demanded that all HSCA staff members and their private researchers sign secret secrecy oath, allowed the CIA and FBI to conduct secret. Uh, security checks on them and defend his actions by asking quote I've worked with the CIA for 20 years why for 20 years would they lie to me he asked take that statement to consideration where recently uh, head of the CIA came out and said the CIA's job is to deceive is to lie the CIA's job is to make sure that when all is said and done, no one believes anything they hear. Card number 10. Lee Harvey Oswald. Card number 10. Lee Harvey Oswald. The Patsy. The Patsy. We're into 10 cards and we already know that he was a Patsy beautiful beautiful look at this look at that a puppet patsy oh let's get this focus there we go oh it's a mannequin thing very cool painting very cool painting wow 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 Lee Halsey, Harvey Oswald. While in police custody, Lee Oswald was grilled repeatedly by federal and local officials, but incredibly, no tapes or transcripts were made of his interrog interrogation. His questionnaire said that although Oswald admitted to being a Marxist, a former Soviet defector and a supporter of Fidel Castro, he steadfastly denied shooting anyone there have never been any hard evidence against oswald who claims he was quote just a patsy end quote but over the years he has emerged as a mystery man who in in inhabited a secret world of spies and conspiracies born and raised by his mother marguerite in new orleans Oswald enlisted in the Marines in 1956, known as Shitbird because of his poor marksmanship. <laughs> Oswald had another Marine nick uh, nickname, Oswaldukovich, a reference to his open uh, espousal of communism. Yet the 17-year-old was given radar training and a uh, security clearance and sent to Atz. Atsuji Air Base in Japan, the CIA's main operational base in the Far East and home to the top secret U.S. spy uh, missions over Russia. Oswald often visited Tokyo where he car carried on with a Japanese hostess who worked at one of the city's most expensive night spots, the Queen Bee. His military record, record, which shows that he contracted venereal disease, quote, in the line of duty, end quote, suggests these trusts uh, tri tri might have uh, been an intelligence assignment. 
After his report from Japan on November 19, 1958, Oswald took a crash course in Russian at the Army's uh, Monterey School, now the Defense League Institute. On September 11, 1959, Oswald obtained an early discharge. A month later, he defected the Soviet Union. Wow. Wow. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Card number 11. Card number 11. James Jesus Angleton. Or James Jesus Angleton. CIA KGB CIA KGB Who's this guy? Let's check it out. James Jesus Angleton. In addition to Oswald, several U.S. military men defected to the USSR between June 1958 and January 1960. At least four of them, including Oswald, soon returned to the U.S. This and Oswald's Marine spy training suggest they were part of a false defector program run by the U.S. intelligence. Gary Power powers whose 1960 spy flight was shot down over russia later said oswald spied uh, supplied the soviets with vital u2 radar data in any case oswald received a government uh, st stipend uh, government stipend and a and a nice apartment in minsk and married marina Pro Sovaskova, whose uncle was a col colonel in Soviet domestic intelligence. In June 1962, Oswald returned home with his bride. They were met by Spas T. Reken, a traveler's aid uh, society agent who was also Secretary General of the CIA, connected, again, connected American friends of the anti-Bolshevik nations. The State Department, advised by the FBI, said Oswald had not ex expatriated himself and could resume U.S. citizenship. Because a State Department look lookout card, what? Because a State Department, quote, lookout card, end quote, wasn't issued, he was able to renew his passport on 24 hours notice in January 1964 KGB agent Yuri Nosenko defected to the US claiming the KGB neither debriefed Oswald about his military background nor recruited him James Jesus Angeles Angeles uh, the CIA counterintelligence chief who handled agency matters pertaining to the Kennedy assassination subjected Nozenko to 1,277 days of hostile interrogation and host, uh, solitary confinement. But Nozenko stuck by his story. Angleton said, later said, quote, A mansion has many rooms. There were many things during that the period. I'm not privy to who struck John, end quote. If Angleton didn't believe Oswald was the lone assassin who struck John, neither could he prove that Oswald was a Kremlin-sponsored killer. And this is interesting. Uh, Minsk. Does that mean right there? Does that mean we're talking Ukraine connection here? Marina Pros Prosava. Vodka. So he got a nice apartment in Minsk in 
at present right now we're in february the minced accord with ukraine and what's going on there interesting 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 gang let's make this our last reading for this live stream okay so we're gonna get to card 12 we'll do the rest of because there's 36 cards here we'll do the rest of these readings in future live stream but let's take a look at card number 12 okay control agent one card number 12 george the morin schilt george the morin schilt card number 12 Control agent number one. I don't know this person at all. Who is this guy? We'll find out. George the Horan Schilt. On their arrival from the USSR, the Oswalds moved to Fort Worth. Oh, minced. It would have been uh, in this one. Minced. It would have been in Russia then. Okay, cool. Cool. Let's check it out. My apologies for that little deviation. Gotta correct it right away. So, card number 12. George the Morin Schult. On his arrival from the USSR, the Oswalds moved to Fort Worth, Texas, where on October 7, 1962, they were visited by an oil geologist named George Sergus the Morin Schult, a Russian born count whose father had been the Tsarist governor. Of Minsk, Marina's uh, Marina's father had been a czarist officer. The Morinshield uh, convinced the Oswalds to move to Dallas. With his help, they were taken in by the Russian uh, Immigre Committee, many of whom were right-wing uh, solidarists who sided first with the nazis and later with the cia against the communists on october 12th the eve of the cuban missile crisis oswald was hired by a, by a graphic artist a graphic arts company that did classified work for the army map service on top of secret u2 overflights of cuba for the next six months Lee and George were close friends, an odd couple if there ever was one. George's social contacts included oil men like H. L. Hunt, Clint uh, Murchison Sr., and Dean Demenev, a fellow Russian immigre and head of the CIA connected Scholberg Corporation. His good friend J. Walter Moore an agent in the CIA's domestic contacts division had encouraged George to befriend Oswald. A world traveler fluent in six languages, the Count's relationship with the CIA and his forerunner, the OSS, dated back to World War II, when, according to the FBI, he worked for both the French underground and the Nazis. His counsel, Baron Constantine Maydell, a producer of Nazi propaganda films, was a top Eber agent in the USA. A Weller agent in the USA. The Morshell, the, the Morrell Shell, and Oswald parted company in April 1963. Oswald left for New Orleans and 
Morinshield went to Haiti, stopping en route in Washington, D.C. to meet with a CIA agent and an assistant director and, as, and an assistant director of a, Army Intelligence. Wow, what is going on with this Nazi CIA Russian connection stuff? And this stuff is playing out right now through the Ukraine. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Gang, that's 12 cards that we just had to read through. Okay. We will read card number 13 to 36 in another live stream and maybe even just break it up into two, 12 and 12 again as well, right? So we got 24 cards left to read that we're going to do at another date. Okay. And we will definitely do them. And most definitely, I will upload, cut each one of these segments out individually and upload them as individual segments as well. Okay. For now, I'm going to go back to the live stream and catch up with people on the chat.